Hi, welcome to Papa's Workshop. In today's video, I want to be able to take the white tiles and be able to take it up a notch and add color. Now I'm going to do a test grid and show you how to set up that to be able to find out what is the best power and the speed to be able to run the laser. And then we're going to actually do this type of a project and show you just how easy it is using Lightburn to be able to do this type of an image. Can't wait to show you this. We're going to start by cleaning these tiles really well. I want to make sure that there's no oils, grease, or anything on there that would interfere with how the paint sticks to this. And then I'm going to use some different colors. I'm going to use one that's going to be red as a base coat only. And I'm going to have one with the red and the orange. And I have an old can of this blue. We're going to give this a try. Now, this is a different brand, different type of paint. So we're going to see how this works. As far as the top coat, I'm going to use the black flat to be able to put the coat on. Now, this can's almost empty. So if I run out of this, then I'm going to go ahead and use gloss because these two cans both are almost empty as well. So I'm going to use a lot of the leftovers for this project. On the back of each of these tiles, I'm going to take the marker and mark what I do with it. It's important to note, too, that you need to always start with the lightest color first, whatever that may be. In this case, when I do the orange and the red, I'll start with the orange first. And then the top coat will always be the black in the scenario that we're doing. To clean the tile, I'm just going to use some acetone with a paper towel, wipe it off, and let it completely dry. It only takes just a couple of minutes. It doesn't take long. Just a little bit on the paper towel, and then just wipe it off. And that's really all that's necessary. The good thing is this evaporates very quickly and it will be dry. Then I'll take these outside and put that first base coat on it. Now these four tiles are going to be a test grid that I'm going to use because I don't know the settings that's going to work for this type of process. So we're going to be doing just a little bit of experimenting to see what the best settings are depending on the type of paint and how thick the paint is. Something that people don't realize, to be able to get the paint can to work and spray the best, it's actually best to go ahead and warm it up. Let it sit in the sun for about 10 minutes. Now make sure that you shake this can really well. And I've done that already. So let's go ahead and spray this. We're going to spray coming this way first, and then we're going to turn and go in this direction. And then that's it. To begin with, we're going to start right here and make sure that it flows. Then we'll start over here, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and spray this one, and then I'm going to turn. But you can see some light spots in there. And that's all I do. So I'm going to let that dry now for about an hour, and then I'll go ahead and put the black on top of it. Now we're going to go ahead and give this blue a, a try and see how it works. Now this paint definitely is harder to work with. But that is not an even coat. So if you look at that, I am not real impressed with that at all. So I'm gonna consider this a bust and I don't like this paint. I've had quite a few questions about the paint to use and people having problems in different parts of the world. Well, this is a reality. Some don't work. Also, when I touch the edge, even though this tile was completely dry from the acetone, it still peeled off. It is not sticking. So this is definitely a paint that I would not recommend. 
Now this is the only other sort of blue that I have. It's called Seaside. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a try. I've cleaned up the tile, so it looks brand new again. Yeah, there's a little bit of blue on the edges, but that's okay. Gonna shake this one up again really, really good. That looks 100% better. Now I have this one and the other one that I went ahead and marked red and then black. Now in the back I went ahead and marked this as a seaside and then I'm going to put black. And right now that finish is absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to get this one sprayed black. Now this is the gloss black. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. There's very little left in the can. So I may have to grab another one. Let's see how far I can get. It's not even gonna work. There's not enough paint in it to build a spray. So this can's empty. So this will be round two. And this one's probably about half empty already, but it is the gloss black as well. And again, after thoroughly shaking it, we're going to shoot it off to the side, and we know that the paint's going to come out. Now in this case, I'm gonna use the gloss red. On the back, I have it labeled orange, red, and then the final coat will be the black. I've had quite a few comments on this type of process, and so I'm spending a lot of extra time to show you in detail exactly how this should be done. Now we'll let this sit for about an hour, and we'll come back and paint black on this one. If you ever wanna watch paint dry, here you go. That'd be a long video. Hey, it's been about an hour again. I'm gonna go ahead and spray the black now. So this has the orange, red, and now it'll have black. Okay, I think you've seen this process enough to understand exactly how to be able to do it to be able to have success. So let's move on. One final note that I can't forget is once you have all of this paint done, you got to let it sit and dry for 24 hours before bringing it over to the laser. So how do we get the test grid? Well, it's very easy to make. And one of the things that I had done quite some time ago is actually made one. So I can come right down here at the bottom to my art library and click down here on the test pattern. And then from there, I can just show you this one for an example. Now this one has an awful lot of detail in it. And I'm gonna come over to the layers and I'm gonna put the black on the fill and we'll turn that on too. Okay, so this one has a wide range of power settings and then it has the speed settings along here. And this is so that I can actually test a wide range of power and speed all at one time. Now the way this grid works, I have a 20% power with a 40 uh, inches per minute, and that's that square. This will be the 20% power with a 50 inches per minute, and so on. So if I go over and click on this, you can see that is my blue line, and it has all of my 40 inches, 50 inches, and so on, all the way down to 100 inches per minute. And everything is set up right here. Now this is more than what I want to do with this particular pattern today for the paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one. We'll cut it. We'll get it out of the way. 
and I want to bring this one over to you. This one is actually going to be closer to what actually is what we need. And I started with 5% here, 8, 10, and so on. And this entire grid is running at 50 inches per minute with or 1270 millimeters per minute. And all of that information is set right here. Now you can change these settings to anything that you want. These I know are going to be close to be able to give me something that is going to work. But let's go ahead and put together one from scratch and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Now I have a clean section of my workspace to be able to work. And the first step I am going to do is create the size of that square. And instead of using this green, I'm going to go ahead and put this on a framing layer. So this is going to be T1, and I'm going to change this to the size of my tile, which is four and a quarter by the four and a quarter. From there, I'm going to come in and I want to set up another square. Now this square is going to be the same as these. So I'm going to set this one at 0.5 of an inch. 5.5 of an inch and again this can be anything that you wish with this in here now I can use the array tool and set up the grid very easily and this is the array tool right down here at the bottom and there's a lot of different parameters that you can set in here but I want to be able to have and I can just grab this and slide it out of the way I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and I'm going to put the four rows going across and three rows down. Now the spacing in here, you can see, is a half an inch on both. And I think that will work fine. So we're just going to click OK. Come back up here to the Select tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and highlight everything. And if I hit Bullseye, what's that going to do? That's going to put everything right there in the center. That's not what you want. So let's go ahead and back out of that. And now I have this grid. So I'm going to highlight just these little guys right there. And I'm going to come up to this one right here. You see with the group of people? And that is going to group these together. Now, when I highlight everything, I can come up here, hit the bullseye, and that's going to center it. You see the difference and how easy that was. The next step is to be able to put in the text. I'm just going to come down and put this on the black layer right now. And then I'm going to highlight my text tool. And then I can put in here the tile at the 50 inches per minute. Space this over a couple. Put in 1270 millimeters per minute. And that takes care of it. So I'm going to come back to the selection tool now. And from there, let's just go slide it over. And we'll just drop it in. You can see it snap in position. So that's going to be in the center. So that's how you're going to set the text up for all of these different um, little squares. Now let me show you on one square. And then you can duplicate it from there very easily. So let's go ahead and highlight this and ungroup it. So we ungroup this, so now we have individual squares again. And the first thing I want to do is put this one onto the blue layer. And this blue layer is going to be a fill, and I want to be able to change it where it's a fill and a line. Just like that. Now as far as the settings, we had five over here. So we can click on this, and we can come over and change this to anything that we want. So let's open up this window and it's showing the 50 inches per minute and the 5% power. If you wanted to change this and put in 10%, you could do that without any problem at all. And then you can just hit OK. And down here, instead of writing in the 5, just simply put in the 10 and you would be OK. And that's how easy it is to change it. And of course, I want to put this on the black layer for all my text. And there it is. So that's now a 10% on 50 inches per minute. 
and you can do this for each and every square on whatever setting that you want. So I hope you can see just how easy it is to be able to set up these test grids. And when you're done, of course, you can go ahead and save it in your art library so that you can pull it any time that you need it and make any adjustments. Now I know on the tile that 50 inches per minute and these settings are gonna work fairly well. Don't know exactly which one will be the best. That's why we're gonna give it a, a try and look and see and make that comparison. Now this is that seaside blue with the black on it. So I'm just gonna slide that in right here. And also off camera, I've already set the Z height. And I put a couple little marks right here as far as the reference. So we're good to go. I can go ahead and engrave this. Now this will go in the order of the different layers that you have. So it is going to engrave all of the letters for and numbers first. Now this is set at the 50 inches per minute with the 25% uh, percent power. And that has actually worked real well for this painted tile. Now, if you were interested in why I had Seaside Blue, well, this is it. I did a little upgrade on the headboard that uh, I had made for my granddaughter, and she loves the characters in this theme, so that's what we did. And that's the Seaside Blue with the other colors mixed in as well. As expected, these are looking really good, and I would expect that because this blue is turning out very similar as it should to the red tile. Now I actually had made some mistakes on that red tile and more on that in a few minutes. Now this tile with the seaside blue is actually turning out fantastic just as it should. So let's take a look and then we'll make a comparison with the different tiles. Now we can see some better differences. That five shows a lot more of the black the 8 and 10 are almost identical. There's a little bit of difference. And then as we get up into this range, you can see the similarities between the 20 and 25. And then down at the 50, we're actually getting pretty much through everything, but there's still a little bit of the blue showing. So this is a real good example of what we need to be able to have. Now, for the what you've really been waiting for, we're gonna do it the one with the three colors. Now this is the one with the orange, red, and the black. So let's go ahead and put this down here. I'm gonna line it up on that two marks that I had right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit start and get this one going. Okay, I've got all three completed. And the first step is to take a micro cloth and be able to wipe everything down. You want it nice and clean and that will help remove any of the paint uh, dust that may have been on the tile. Now this is the orange, red, and the black. Wiping it off and you can see those different colors. And the third one of course is the red one. Now this is the one that I had made the mistake on. Look at that first square at the 10%. It actually is the 50 inches per minute, 10% power, but the difference is it went with four passes. My mistake. Here's another mistake. I painted the black onto the tile and see how it reacted? Now well, that was the sun. It baked in the sun for about 10 minutes. The nice thing about it, it can be easily cleaned. I can take some lacquer thinner, wipe it off, and guess what? I've got a brand new tile, and I can just go ahead and spray it again and start over. And just to show you with this one that I had made the mistakes on, again, I'm taking the lacquer thinner on this red engraved tile, and I'm just going to erase the error and wipe it down and make a brand new tile again. So this is one of the things that you can do with the painted tile versus the method with the Norton white tile method, which actually burns into the tile itself. So this one can be again erased completely and started over as a brand new tile. Now this one will take a little bit more effort because the paint was dried for 24 hours as compared to that previous tile that just baked in the sun for about 15, 20 minutes and got way, way too hot. So after a couple minutes, of cleaning with the lacquer thinner, I've got a brand new tile.
Now this time I'm going to try something totally different. I had some gold paint and I went ahead and sprayed it with the gold color and I think that looks absolutely beautiful. Now this again is a Rust-Oleum gold and it has worked fantastic. The colors are just gorgeous on this. So I'm looking forward to being able to engrave this one. Now I went to the computer again and I went to the adult coloring pages and found this logo. And it's time to engrave this and it is the gold with the black. So it's the exact same process and I'm using this at the 50 inches per minute with the 25% power because that has worked real well for each of the different colors. So therefore I did not run a test grid specifically for the gold because the process of the painting is exactly the same. So once you have that done, it is going to be the same each time. So the 50 inches per minute with this painted tile and the results are awesome. With the colored tiles, make sure that the last step that you do when you have a product like this is go ahead and put a clear coat on it because that will seal it and protect it. Otherwise, it is not protected and it will take a beating over time. Remember, this is just paint. It's not permanently embedded into that white tile. The other thing that I want to point out to you is please make sure when you're choosing an image, make sure that you pick the absolute best image that you possibly can find. You want a high, good quality image. And this is the type of result that you can get with a high quality image. If you pick an image that is not of a real high quality, guess what? The results are going to be reflected in your tile also. And this is an example. This is a tile that where I did not pick the best graphics and the result was not so good of a tile. It did exactly what the tile was showing in the computer and it's not the type of quality that you want. So remember, pick the best graphics that you can with the highest resolution and you're gonna get results such as this. I'm very proud of this and I look forward to being able to do many more projects such as this. So thank you very much for watching today and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video on whatever I do. And I've got a big surprise coming up that you're not going to want to miss. So please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and the little bell notification next to it. Also, please share your experiences in the comment section and let me know the good and the bad that you have had doing these types of tiles. And if you have any questions on the process, feel free to ask there also. I will do my best to be able to answer every single comment. So again, thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing you soon in the next video.